We're just getting ready. We're going to be here in about 10 minutes. And this is our file for today. I'll see you soon.
Hi everybody and um, welcome. I think we've got everything going together. Um, this stream this week is going to be all about just leaf placement um, and how to generate things uh, exactly the way you see them in the wild and mixed a little bit with how we actually cheat <laughs> to make things um, poly friendly and good for the tree but still maintaining the look. Um, so what I've got here is a whole lot going on in my generator because I've got all these these little things in there. You probably won't ever put this many species in one uh, file, but <laughs> that works. And um, I've got all of my textures have already been loaded in. And I've gone ahead and I put cutouts on all of these um, so that we can go ahead and just get straight to leaf placement. Um... One of the things I'm going to do is we're going to zero in on this guy over here to start. Uh, thank you for joining us, everybody that's coming in. I'm sure we'll have people popping in and out. But if you guys have specific plants that you don't know how to put together or you can't get the, the leaves to align the right way, um, now is a good chance for you can just drop it in and I'll Google what it looks like and see if I can do it live stream. Um, so we're going to get started and kind of zoom in on this guy over here. I'm going to turn the rest of my um, plants off <laughs> for the time being. All right. You guys might remember from V7 um, that our generation styles, uh, we had a lot of the main ones here. We had absolute, proportional steps, proportional classic, and absolute steps. Um, these are all fine to use, but they are more our V7 set. And we've added a lot in V8 and V9. I should have added this today. I'm using the V9 Cinema Modeler. Um, so this one's still in Veda. Um, but everything I'm doing today, you would be able to follow along and do in V8 as well. Um, and we are focused on VFX trees today. We'll probably do another clustering, shaping type leaf placement um, another week. So... I'm gonna. Or it heard something. <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off the absolute steps. Okay. The reason I would use absolute steps um, is if I was making a flower or a bud and I had a very mathematical proportion and I knew that I needed six on each one. Um, a more intuitive way to do that without having to worry about um, changing sizes and lengths of your branch would be to use interval. Um, We've talked in the past weeks or whatever, but interval is what I use most of the time um, because it's based on a frequency. So no matter how um, long or short my branches get, if I add variance in there, I can uh, have the same frequency on each branch. Um, so this makes it a little easier to get a, an even tree that has nice fill in it. There you go. Make sure we're going good. Is the stream going okay for everybody? I've had problems in the week past. So this week we are skipping the um, Facebook screen to try to get a smoother stream for you guys. And maybe you guys can see some of the buttons and everything going on. All right. Um, when you work on the frequencies of these guys, um, when you're working on tiny plants, your frequency numbers will be high. So if you ever add branches to the tree and you don't see them, you might need to increase your frequency. The first thing we do with placement is you always want to watch. Um, if I only want to place something on the end of the branch, I would push up the first so that it only appears up here. Um, or let that go down like that. Um, when we're setting up something that is uh, super, super structured, we have in here our phylotaxy generator that's going to allow you mimic nature um, very quickly. So uh, I've got it on world right now. I'm going to, this one works backwards. Um, this one is the length between each branch um, 
nodes. So if I want more of them to appear right now, I need to make the inner node length less. So I want to make sure that they're going to fit in there. I have it on world, which means they're just coming out wrapped around. We want to put it on opposite first. I'm going to show you they're going to pick an opposite side and it's also going to um, rotate on this guy. If you put them on opposite discus, I should have learned how to say that word for the stream. Um, this is going to be very, very common. Um, right now they are offset because they're spread. So this would be a very even mathematically proportioned plant. And then you can spread them. You can get the same look by switching this to alternating um, with an even amount between each um, two. <laughs> so hello trees. Oh, and hello, oh yes. Um, we're just gonna keep going. So, um, one of the ways that you can stagger all of these, um, so when you set up any of these, if you have a mathematical plant and you're looking at one in the wild, um, obviously these are drawings, so they're very, very exact, but if you look at a real tree, even the mathematical ones have little bits of variance in them. So one of the first things that I would do when you're stepping up your plants, um, this is a great example here, is um, get your inner node length correct, and then go ahead and add small amounts of variance in the position or the rotation in order to get it more lifelike. Also adding variance in the gravity or adding variance in the start angle or just kind of key beginner setups. I wouldn't do anything with variance until after you've actually got the main setup. <laughs> Tree friends. <laughs> got to see more people jumping in. And don't forget to drop your um, favorite trees or trees you just want to be seen if you have anything you want to be made. All right, we're going to go start. I'm going to go ahead and start adding some of the leaves on some of these guys so I can show you some different um, looks. We're going to start with um, one of the, the very, very, very simple ones. Um, we're going to look at this red bud here, um, which I've actually, it's not, it's not a super great red bud. We're just going to look at this one because it's just the leaves in the branch. Um, I'm going to select that guy. I have so many in here that these are just teeny, teeny, tiny. You can zoom in and drag that all around. I've actually color coded these. You can grab these now and right click and go icon colors and change them. Very hel helpful. Um, so we're looking at just this guy here and we're going to delete that and we're going to go ahead and um, add this on here. We want to add a leaf mesh. Um, if this is a VFX uh, software, um, we can use the batch leaves and that would be fine as well. If you're going to do any node editing, like this is a branch that you want to fine tune, you want to use the leaf mesh. I'm going to go ahead and add that in there. And we're going to go ahead and generate. These guys are going to be phylotaxy and then opposite of each other. And we're going to make them fill out, flood out the, the branch there. I should have hidden the rest of our trees. <laughs> I almost hit delete just now and that would have been really funny. Um, all right, we want to select the um, material that we need for this guy. So we're going to hit it and hit skin and hit the material. And this was going to be the red, red bud leaf. There we go. And that's pretty generic. And so what I did was I have these aligned with the branch. Um, when you hit here, you can actually choose to align them um, with what the branch is doing. So I've got some curl on there and they're gonna listen to that. We're gonna go to orientation and we're going to make them push forward just a little bit. We're gonna make the mesh itself get a little smaller towards the tip. So we're going to take that size and then say, according to the branch, I want them to get smaller towards the front. Um, if you ever have a branch like this that you need to end in a single leaf, you can grab this guy and turn on 
the extend parent any, and that will give you uh, that ending leaf. This is um, going to be counted in the size as well uh, on the end of the branch there. So if you need to just change just the tip, it would change there. And hi, Broken Ross. And hello from Uzbekistan. <laughs> It's great to see everybody jumping in. Thank you guys. Um, we want to give this some shape and we want to kind of align it with the branch itself. I've got a picture of a red bud somewhere that I pulled up. I pulled up lots of plants here so I can just kind of go through them. And I don't remember which one it was on. So there's that. <laughs> so I might have lost my picture. I did. Oh, well, the red buds are actually alternating. Um, so instead of this opposite here, I'm going to put it. Grab the wrong one. I'm going to put it on alternating. There we go. And I'm going to decrease that frequency just a little bit. Now I want it to kind of flow um, down the branch and be parallel with the sky. So we're going to go orientation and do sky influence on this guy. You'll notice that because the branch bends back over here, the ones over here are trying to tilt back that way. So we're going to get that with the curve. Um, so we're kind of making these ones up top parallel with the sky, and then we're kind of backing down that. So we're going to just go ahead and put it on. And then we're going to use our curve and say, according to the branch on the bottom, I don't really want them to be sky influencing. I'm going to correct what I've done there. We want to give these leaves some shape. So we're going to go ahead and add some fold and curl to them. I like to add um, what I'm doing with the plant after fold and curl should always come after you position them, I guess would be the best practice there. And I kind of want the ones up here to fold in a little bit. So I'm actually going to put um, some fold on them. Like I might use a curve again and kind of turn it off towards the bottom. And I'm going to just push the first up a little bit. There we go. And now we've got something there. We just don't have anything um, organic looking like yet. We want to add a little bit of variance to our orientation as well when we get in here. It's always good to kind of add a little bit, just tiny numbers to get some realism in there. We really want a little bigger um, in the align and kind of push them there. Um, on the align, I'm going to change it so that they kind of push together a little bit more at the end of the branch. We've got that kind of a pattern going. And we're going to go back to our folding curl and add some variants on the twists. They're doing just a little bit of a different thing. And maybe make our um, fold have a little bit more variance in it, just so it can do different things there. So one thing that's really killing it is they're all the exact same size. Um, we did a curve on the size that we want to kind of switch this up a little bit. So we're going to go to the skin tab and we're going to add a variance in the size itself. And we're also going to skew it a little bit on the scale settings. Don't go extreme here, um, but you can add a little bit of variance in here to create a different leaf, even though I have one leaf loaded in. I probably, I probably would tweak that for a couple more hours, <laughs> not, not that long, but we're gonna go back to the rest of our plants so we can keep going. And we've got, am I improvising? Yes, totally, absolutely, just doing this on the fly. And if you guys have anything that you want to see being made today, I will try my best to show you how it got set up. We're gonna do a special on flowers later in the year. Um, so I'm showing you a little trick over here, but I didn't do a whole lot with flowers because there's just a lot of different setups you can do for those. And so if you have any flower related questions, you can just hold them off till another stream. And we have, there we go. 
All right, the next thing I want to show you is we're going to go over here to our weed leaf. I thought I would get some um, giggles out of that one. <laughs> All right, we're going to turn off everything else. All right, this guy is a bunch of, it's phylotaxy opposite, but they're turned every which way to give it some fill. Um, we are going to, <laughs> we get a tattoo that has, I love speed tree on my arm. That's wonderful. Uh, several members of the speed tree team actually have plant tattoos, which is a cool fact. Um, we are all plant geeks here. So for this guy, I'm gonna just build this one uh, next to the one already made here. And what I'm gonna do is actually add, I'm just gonna copy our main branch here, copying it and pasting it into the scene. Um, you may be wondering how I got them to float like that. And in Speed Tree, you can um, move stuff around now by using the screen space key. It's gonna knock you into node mode. So if I hit the W on this guy, I can actually just move my base stem and I just let it floating around. Um, the old way to do that would be to put it up on a zone or you could sink it if you wanted these things to float. Um, there's really no reason to do this other than the fact that I'm demoing this for you, but I just thought that was neat and why not? I'm gonna hit the tab key. Um, you can hit tab to go through the three different modes. I'm in Speed Tree 9, so this is the new freehand mode that will be out there for you. I'm gonna go back to gen mode and I'm gonna start putting my um, plant stuff on the tree. So what we're gonna use for this is tubes. Um, I'm just gonna keep them straight and so that we can show you everything that we're doing to shape these. Kind of catching up. Uh, and I appreciate you for saying good job because I can never hear that enough times. <laughs> Let's go ahead and add our branches. I'm going to do tubes and I added them to the tree and that's why that looks terrible. And uh, where's our new guy? There it is down there at the bottom. Um, I like the tubes because they have all of the displacement and spine properties taken out. They're just a nice clean way to mathematically set these guys up. Uh, one of the things I did for the um, pot plant here is that these are set up on fronds and you don't need to do that, but I just wanted to show you that as a way to set these up. So I'm going to get the branches holding the fronds in the correct spot. We're going to go to the gin tab. Um, they're on interval. If I was using interval, I, which I totally could, I would just increase the frequency. But for this, I'm going to use phylotaxy and we're going to put it on opposite decacy, making sure I said it right. And we're going to make that internodal length increase. We're going to make our spine the length that we want the leaf to be. So we're going to make it like that. Um, I might have used uh, an absolute number in this if this is a small plant because I want it to generate kind of in the same, but for this we're going to use kind of a combination of the two. I'm going to use the curve here and I'm going to make the branches at the top of the, the uh, plant here a little smaller. It's going to be holding those leaves. Um, obviously there's a lot going on here. And something I did for this is... Um, I have an atlas that I've brought in. So you guys might not r realize that you can use an atlas in Speed Tree. Um, but yeah, you sure can. I downloaded this from Quixel Megascans. This is their uh, weed texture. Got a lot of our textures in here mixed up with theirs. Um, so everything's spread out here. Now, one of the things that I would suggest is if you're going to do multiple cutouts from one, um, use the leaves that are similar in size so you have a little bit more control. Uh, you don't have to, you could add all of these leaves if you want to, but you're going to have a little bit more artistic creation freedom if you keep them in the same uh, size family. I don't know what to call that. So um, to add multiple cutouts, you hit that add button here and then you can hit edit. 
and I got questions, but it looks like Danny got it, so we're good. Um, thanks, Danny. We've got a fourth leaf here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut out. Um, so I've in this particular atlas, I've cut out this one, uh, and this one, and this one. We're gonna just do one more, just so I can show you what to do on the atlas. And uh, obviously I've got to, you move your pivot point to the end of the leaf. I'm scrolling with my wheel. Um, some people didn't realize that you can zoom in and out here on the uh, cutout. I made it a little bigger for you. And we wanna move those side ones in. I'm using a lot more polys on these uh, just because they're smaller examples. So on a big tree, you probably wouldn't want quite so many in a leaf, but if you can have the detail, it, this is a close-up view of what I'm showing you. I'm just going to add just a few more. Um, between your cutouts, you kind of want to have relatively the same number um, just so they match when you go set the displacement for them. I'm going to just send out, I'm not going to make the LODs for these, I'm just going to send out one. So, if I wanted to add a frond on here that will be sitting along here, I'm going to go add and then frond in our templates here. I'm going to click that so I can select the material. And I do that drop down and that is called the weed atlas, which is there. And you'll see that it's showing up with... Uh, not just that one that I've cut out, but all of them. Um, you can do a specific cutout. If you just want that one that I just cut out, it'll be all that way, but for this point, we won't want any. On our material, we have two-sided set, um, and these automatically align um, with the front here. We're gonna go ahead and turn this off so it's not distracting us. We're gonna go ahead and go to skin and I'm setting the spine to spine only and that doesn't count in our poly count, which is awesome. And we've got basically what I've got going on here, except it's way too mathematical right now. Um, something right off the bat that I noticed is that I need some fill plant up here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that same frond and tell it to extend and that way I've got one at the top. Um, I think on this one I cut out the smaller pieces, so we can switch that. I'm also going to make sure I go all the way to the end of the plant. So I'm going to put a 1 in here. Uh, the 0 to 1. I think I will make that like the other one. I'm going to turn the extend parent back off just to show you what I did there. Haha. <laughs> And we, uh, to answer, I guess, Ole, yes, I don't know how to say these uh, screen names. <laughs> Those spells, too many letters in them. Um, we will do a palm specific, like we're going to try to cover, we've got like conifers and we've got just like last week we did a bush. Um, so we'll definitely do a palm specific fronds, like all that stuff, probably make a... I don't know. Haven't picked up that tree yet. Got any suggestions for a palm that we should make live? Her um, I feel like good switch. Yeah. There we go. Back on track. Okay. Um, so now we want to start shaping these guys. You're going to shape these by using a little bit of gravity on the frond itself, and we're going to use the direction of the frond in order to give us our variance, and then we're going to go in and shape the leaf. So, we've got, um, it's just a flat texture now, but the frond underneath it holding it is going to give us our shape. Um, so we're going to add just a little bit of gravity to it. You can use a, um, a force if you want to add some different twisting in there. If you had the same setup on another plant and you added gnarl in, that's a great way to get the leaves to fill out the space and go back and forth. Um, for this one, we're just going to keep it simple. We're going to use a curve at the bottom um, of the plant to just kind of 
make it even more extreme down there and at the top of the plant we are going to make it go the opposite direction so it can fill we're going to make them even tinier at the top of the tree i feel like they just go real tiny up there um you may notice when you're doing the spacing um you might want to go back to the generator and actually change this up so this dotted line is a distribution curve um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put more leaves up at the top so I can fill in this space and make it look a little bit more natural. So I'm going to grab the top of the branch and squish it forward. And you'll see that the frequency is tighter together up here than it is at the bottom now. You can do something like that even if you need. Um, and then we've got our basic shape going on there. Um, I added... Uh, some fill in here. All I did was repeat what I'd already made. So I copied and pasted uh, that and added a second set of stuff um, and just curled it up to make the the bud. The fan palm would be a great palm to use. I see that suggestion. And um, to answer, yes, I do have an art station account. You can find me. Uh, under Sarah Scruggs and it's pretty much all speed tree so you should be able to figure out if there's more than one but I don't think there is um so now that I've got them kind of bent and kind of doing the thing I want to change up the start angle a little bit so I'm going to grab the spine and I'm going to go to spine properties and we are going to just kind of add some variance in the start angle Uh, one thing people might not realize is if they add a frond onto a branch that they've already made and they have a lot of noise in it, it's going to maybe wrinkle up their um, texture a little bit. Let me show you what that looks like. If I grab this and I add some late noise on it, you'll see things get kind of wonky <laughs> fast. So if you're ever trying to figure out why your leaf looks like it's been grumbled up, that would be why. So we're going to take that off for now. Um, I like to leave it off for the most part on fronds. Um, and I like to get my displacement from the mesh itself. Um, but that's just a personal preference. A little bit helps it definitely look wild. Um, they're still a little too stagnant because I haven't added shape to the mesh. That's our next step. We're going to grab this and we're going to use the frond properties to kind of get this going. We're going to hit geometry. And we're going to curl the ends down a little bit. We want to add some variance in the roll. Um, instead of rolling right here, I've got a profile curve on here. Um, people may not realize, but if you max this curve out so that the whole leaf moves, um, you can use that frond and set up something sideways like that. Um, which is a very, very common way of setting something up if you need to do like a game of tree that has things that are completely to the right. Um, but for our scenario here, we just want to add it kind of like a twist in a leaf. So we're going to do a little bit of the back end of the leaf like that. And then we're going to add some variance into it. And now we got things that are kind of shaking up. Um, one thing we might want to do just to make it look like a real plant is to knock some of these guys out um, or to add those uh, variances. Remember I mentioned the variance in rotation and position that will really help it make it look real um, so you don't have things coming out quite mathematically. There we go. Um, the next step for this guy would be to add our, all I did was copy and paste for this. I just went, boop, um, sound effects just for you guys. And Chinese windmill palm grooming. Are they hairy? I've never, I don't know. I haven't seen those guys. <laughs> I can totally do palm at the end of this one if you guys want me to demonstrate. Um, I didn't create one ahead of time, but we can totally do that. But we will have one specific on palms. Um, what I did when I copied that, um, 
I guess I should have mentioned that every time you try to do a, a build of something, um, you really do want to try to do it in as a few generators as possible. Um, but whenever you're going to switch up the direction completely or add a whole new object, um, it's totally fine to do a new branch off. So I've got these guys here and I want to switch the end material to one that I made earlier. So all I did was I copied the atlas and I have a weed brown. I changed the color of it inside speech tree and I grabbed that and just made it a little bit redder. And we are going to assign it to that second um, palm there and that's going to be weed brown. And these we want to be a lot smaller. So I'm going to make the length smaller. And I'm going to push them all to the top. Um, so I'm going to make these guys start up higher. And we're going to change where they're positioned on the tree just by a little bit so they don't run into the other leaves. Um, so I'm going to go back to Jen. I'm going to increase the um, spacing just a little bit and see what we got so that they're in a different spot there. And then we're going to make them even smaller. They're just way too big right now. I might even want these guys to be more even than the ones below. There we go. Okay, and we want the mesh on these guys to curl up to make a, uh, a bud kind of thing. So um, that's all I did was fudge it. And you could load in a mesh. You could make the bud a little bit more carefully. For me, I was trying to go for the visualness of something uh, kind of scaly and fluffy in there and so that you could see this plant from back here and kind of buy it if you're up this close you might not um so on these guys i just folded them and then turned them around the other direction so i'm just going to do a max on this and then just kind of turn them and then you can kind of i don't know play around with these guys a little bit it's just Adjust the settings to where you got them, where you want them. I might even change the start angle so that they're kind of pointing up um, in there. There we go. So they are overlapping and running into one or the other. So you could have them fight with collision if you really wanted to. Um, but for this case, for the sake of them not taking out the green leaves, I'm just going to leave them in there like that. The last thing I did was I cut out this little tip texture. I'm going to show you what that looks like for a second. It's just this little guy in the corner, and they included a lot of them in the atlas. Um, and I set that as a separate uh, leaf mesh, and I put it on Generation Absolute and just put a couple of them there and then pushed them up to the very, very top of the tree or plant, whatever we're calling this. And got some questions and sorry, so says, um, this project is specifically, sorry, the question is, is this project for cinema or is it for games? Um, this is more, this is the cinema modeler and these are more cinema resolutions. Um, so if you look at my whole project file, I've got thousands of polygons in here. So. We are going to go ahead and switch to a new plant. We're gonna hide our um, pot and I had missed that guy. All right, we're going to go to a request that we got, which was an acacia tree. I'm just gonna show you how we set that one up real fast. And, um, I probably should have uh, noodled that a little bit more than we do. We're going to delete this guy and we're going to start building. Um, one of the things that I, I think I pulled it up here. No, it's a U tree. One of the things that you do while you build is um, this was the request that we got from Twitter, just as how we get this nice fluffy shape in here. Um, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of tiny little leaves on this guy. And in speed tree, we have uh, people who want to make everything absolutely botanically correct, and you can't do that. Um, you have to kind of fudge it because you need the polygons in order to have a tree that's not going to break your computer. <laughs> 
Um, so what we're going to do is show you how to get a fluffy look and set up the leaves so they're going to fill out the space in this little area. Um, if you look at this up close, uh, it looks like this. It's a single little stem with opposite leaves and everything's aligned. Um, so let's get to building. Oh, <laughs> are you logged into two different places? Is that why you have two different names? That's interesting. Um, okay, I'm a little all over the place. Um, one of the things that we are going to do on this one is add a little bit more noise. We're gonna add some branches. Um, I'm just gonna do bifurcating because it's a great thing to show you right now. This is another generation style. Um, this is one of the fastest ways to build out a tree just because it looks so incredibly natural. Um, if you add bifurcation on bifurcation, you're going to interact together like this. There we go. So, um, bifurcation is basically when there is an elbow or a bend, speed tree will try to put a branch coming off of the bend section. Um, this is very common just in nature. It just, it's just starting that branch off. It looks a lot like a split. Um, it's controlled by balance. So if you add too many of these and there's too many branches and you want to balance them out, you can just kind of wiggle this back and forth. If you want them to align, which we do, and that's going to align with the parent before it, and it's gonna do flat. We're also gonna use a force on this one just to kind of imitate the acacia look. We're gonna go ahead and add that in there. I've already added it, so we don't need to do it again. We're gonna to go to the forces tab and we're going to hit the planar, which is the force I added for this one. Um, planar levels it out. And so this is the look we want for this kind of branch out. I think on these guys, I might not bifurcate a line quite so much because they're running into each other on the inside there. Just kind of want to... If you ever had a tree and you wanted them to not be in the middle and you didn't want to use um, interior pruning, which right now I could, I could hit spine and use this interior pruning to try to get rid of the ones knocking into each other. Um, but if you don't want to set it up that way, the other way to set it up would be to go generator and put this on interval and then put it on a one and then you can actually control which way the branches are pointing out. Um, so there's several answers for how to set something up for every single plant type. Yeah. And... <laughs> I'm modeling speedily. <laughs> um, like what you want um, in the initial thought process, but I guess I've been doing this for a while, so I kind of know exactly what I want to do. Um, on this guy, we are going to add a set of spines for the leaves to hang off of. I'm going to add a little set of branches. I'm going to add tubes again for this. And we're going to put these on interval. And the reason I'm using interval is that I want to use controlled spacing. I'm going to put this on two. And these are going to automatically align with the branch because I've got this guy on. I need quite a few of them. I'm going to fill them out. Because I'm in small, um, you might not see something show up right away. And it's simply just because I have short branches um, compared to the big, a big, big tree. We're going to see if that's enough. Um, if you look at the picture again, are there any good botanical books for artists is a great question. We have several favorites. Um, we actually tweeted this one time because we had a, uh, I would say Danny is our book, our tree book geek. Um, he can post a few for you <laughs> right now and I'll probably get payback for calling him a geek again, but, um, 
yeah, I have a big stack of botanical books, and I just I just love drawings, and I like looking at how plants are put together. So, um, do we usually go by eye? It's definitely a mix of looking and studying the plant and figuring out what it does in nature and then how to set that up to maybe cheat um, for fullness, I guess. You can't have everything. <laughs> and then... Okay, I think I'm caught up. Yeah, Danny's got some links to throw at you. Um, these guys, if you take a look at this, I know right off the bat that these are alternating and they're not directly across from each other. And then I've got this little wispy guy here. I'm going to go ahead and throw this back over here. And is there any um, reason to use quads over triangles? It just depends on the project you're doing. If you're doing sub D, you might need quads. Um, if you're doing something that requires a really good blend or weld, I just prefer using triangles. All of our store trees are using triangles. So, um, these are going to hold the leaves, the leaflets, I guess, and we're going to use, um, regular leaf meshes coming off of this instead of using the fronds this time. We're going to go ahead and add, um, some batch leaves on these. Right off the bat, I know that I want them facing parallel, so I'm going to go ahead and do sky influence on these. And I'm going to use our material. I've added this in here, it's the acacia leaf. Um, to tell you the truth, it's actually a yew leaf that I did not, I just copied it and I was like, it's green, it's the same shape. I'm going to just shrink it down a little bit and reuse and recycle. It's perfectly okay. Um, so first things off the bat, we're going to get these the size we want. So we're going to go to skin tab, shrink them down a little bit. I've got one coming off. Sorry, it's a little hard for you to see. Let me try to get back. We're just gonna focus on one single thing. There we go. I've got absolute one on these. We're gonna put these on um, Pilot Taxi and we're gonna do opposite again. And we're gonna make the inner node length tight between them. Because these, um, these branches will be relatively the same length um, it's okay to use phyllotaxy. If I had a bunch of variants in the length on this branch, I might use interval um, to set these up. We're going to make them small, smaller and shorter first. I'm going to go to the skin tab and we're going to squish down the texture. Sorry, I'm just bringing the Y value down. We're also going to make the tip a little smaller down there. This is unkosher, I guess, because I'm definitely extremely squishing these guys, but it's going to be so tiny that it's not going to matter. There's our leaf. Um, we want to give it some shape, so we're going to go ahead and curl these guys down. We're going to add a little bit of variance in the curl. We're going to go to our orientation and we're going to go to the fold tab and we're going to add a little bit of variance in the fold. That's going to keep it from being too static. So that way these leaves don't perfectly align. They will filter it out. So adding that little bit of variance in there makes it fluffier. The second thing that would fluff out and give you the shape for the tree is going to be in the branch before it. And we'll do that when we're done with our leaves. Um, Oh, Danny's right. I do love those Audubon guides. Those are wonderful. And I got a question about how to bend a branch, but not up or down. Okay. We've added some stuff in nine. Um, I'll show you those in just a second. When we get done with this, I can show you different directions for the leaf itself. Um, real fast with these leaves. Um, they're really flat right now. The reason for that is I took the normal out. Um, there was a pretty big bump in there and I didn't want it. So I just took it out, um, to make these a little bit more like an acacia leaf. Um, we're going to use, instead of the normal, we're going to use the lighting to make this leaf puffier. And so it looks like a little bit more rounded. So we're going to go to skin and go to puffiness. And I'm actually just going to Puff the edges out a little bit. Kind of 
cheating. Uh, if you need to see what's going on, you can hit show normals. And this is exactly what's going on with our light. I'm pushing the edges of this guy out. Um, you can also uh, do this per section if you need to. I would put this on local and puff them out. And it's looking at this branch right here now. Um, yeah. Turn those back off. Okay, let's see how we did. I'm gonna get clear and have them back off and obviously that's terrible. We want these guys to um, align. So I'm going to the branch before it. I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see my generator. Sorry about that. I keep forgetting that you guys need to see and you know, everything's teeny tiny. Uh, first thing first, we wanna align these together so they're pointing a little bit more off the branch. Uh, and we also want to make them alternating um, just a little bit. I'm gonna hit gen. Um, I don't mind that they're interval like that, but I'm going to put a little bit of variance in the position and maybe a little bit in the rotation just to swing things up. And we are going to change the start angle to push them more out like that. We want a lot of variance in here for this one. I'm going to use a variant number on gravity just so I can fluff these guys out. And one thing that he, sorry, this is the question that was being asked. Um, how do we get a, instead of a gravity motion, which is up and down, how do we get that side to side option? Um, if you're in V8, you can go to force tab and add a uh, gnarl. And one of the things I like to do with this is grab, oops, sorry. We're gonna hit forces and we're going to turn it off and we're gonna add variants in there so they're going back and forth. And I don't really want the tip to gnarl, I want the sooner part to gnarl. You can kind of pull them back and forth that way. In V9, we have something new so you don't have to use a force. Um, you can go to the spine tab and we have these parent curls. Um, so instead of just gravity up and down now, you can add variance in the left and right. Um, so make it a little faster there. You can also do up, down, and out. Just to kind of show you what's going on there. I guess I should have shown you with it, not the variance, just so you could see. Um, so you'll notice this is a very, very common look for um, new speech tree artists. They have added their trees and they set up their leaves the way they wanted them. And then when they started shaping their branches, they were like, ooh, my leaves need to actually align with the branch itself per piece. And then... <laughs> They're making fun of Danny's name. Oh, so we're going to go back in here and we're going to do a little bit more shaping with our leaves to get these to align um, with the actual movement that we're doing to get fluffiness. Um, we're going to go to orientation. And we're going to use parent sensitivity. Um, this is going to look to location on the tree. So if I've got it on global, it's going back to the origin. And so if I add bits in there. You see how they're all leaning towards the origin now? Um, if I put this on intermediate, it's going to be looking more like that. Uh, sorry, towards the, the base of the spine here. Um, I would say for this tree, I would go real, real local and just do it per um, branch section. Actually, it looked a little better there. Kind of face those leaves out. And then you can use the curves again. Um, kind of push these out and use curves on the uh, parent sensitivity as well. Like sometimes on the tips of the branch, I want them to be very aligned, but along the base, I really don't where the curve is not. I can flip those back up. Um, you can add some variance in there as well to shake things up. We can add a little bit of size variance in there just because it looks terrible. Um, I 
There we go. Because I have Sky Influence on, it's definitely... These guys are fighting each other for some of those. Now get... Every now and again, you'll have one that just really just does not want to behave. Um, something easier for control on these guys. So I put variance in the gravity, which is making this flip up. Um, and because you have winding on, it's trying to flip around. Um, you could turn this off so you have more control and get shaped um, a set of branches that you like and then add one with the winding up. You can turn winding off for this. Um, you can click on the leaves and hit uh, skin and fix winding off and they will um, not try to flip around and that will help a little bit. Fine. Um, the very ends of the leaves to be very very sky influenced and so I'm going to add according to the tubes I just want them to be up. I'm just use a little bit up as well on the tips. You can do stuff like that with the curves. Um, these are kind of too long for acacia leaves. I really would have something a little bit shorter. But um, that's to give you a gist of it. And you can see it's getting fluffier there because I added the shape on the spines below it. We're going to go ahead and... Um, <laughs> or the new feature is galactically necessary. It's always been in there. It's just that you had to add a force to get it. So it was a little bit obscure for people to find. So I'm glad you like it. Um, I definitely think that we added lots of things that people have been asking for for ages in V9. So I'm really excited when you guys will finally get a chance to... Get your hands on this one because it's it's just all about ease of use and the convert tools are amazing and i was turning everything back on so that we can move to our next plant um i'm gonna hit a save just to make sure we don't crash or anything uh thank you guys I'm really glad we have so many people on the stream today. Okay. I want to show you this ginkgo uh, next. So we're just going to kind of roll through these. I should have done them in order, but um, I'm an artist. We don't do things in order, apparently. Um, we're going to go ahead and hide these guys again. And um, this is just such a simple setup uh, that I should have done it in the correct order so that oh well making a fill on a plant where it's not exactly extremely botanically accurate if you look at an actual ginkgo um you'll see that there's clusters like there's like three or four or five coming off of a little bud base um in the tree itself I've got the stem scanned, and instead of using three or four of these, I want the look of a very, very full branch without all the leaves in here. Um, I've got some extra polygons as a pretty big cutout for this particular tree, but um, I've achieved this just with alternating. So what we're gonna do is, pretty sure I put it in all alternating, let's check. I just flooded it for that one, but we're going to build it again. We're going to go ahead and delete that. Just have a stem and have it kept off. We're going to go add and we're going to do a batch leaf on these. And we're going to put our material back on and I hit the ginkgo. I spelled it wrong on that. So just ignore me there. <laughs> There's a G in there and I forget it every single time. Um, so, uh, one of the things I like to do, uh, I'm just going to show you this real fast just because it's kind of a neat thing too. If you ever have a leaf on a trunk or an object or something and you need it to spawn on one side of the tree, uh, a neat trick to do, I'm going to make this fat real fast. Say this was a mushroom. Let 
let's curl it. Okay. Is to use interval. Um, so that last one, I flooded it with absolute. We're just going to use interval and we're going to put it on a one and we're going to increase the frequency. And now I have them all on one side. Um, but by just changing up the rotation just a little bit, um, and the position there, that's kind of a fun little rainbow thing going on there. Um, you can do that little growth on one side of the tree and just stretching that rotation out would get you wider bits of that. So if you're doing like moss or you need leaves on the side of a branch, um, that's how you would set that up. For the ginkgo, we're going to just make it smaller again. We're going to take that stem and bring it back down. I double clicked on accident. We're going to make it skinny again. And for the ginkgo, I just flooded this with tons of variants. Um, I'm just going to add a couple to the count and I want them to all kind of bend up. So I'm using curl to actually put them into position. I'm also going to orient them so that they're aligned. I'm using alignment. Oh, I have sky influence on, so they're being influenced by that. I'm going to use fold to get them to go up and down. And then we're going to do some variants on there. And we're going to use, um, Collision, after we're done on this one, will be pretty important if we were building this out. Um, if you notice in that other one, the reason why it looked full and different is because they were all turned. So we use this twist a lot. Um, we're just going to add a big variance in the twist so they're all pulled out a different direction. And that's pretty much all I did to that other one. Um, and just change up the size a little bit. You guys know that there's um, there's a variance number. So say you needed a, a bunch of small ones and clusters, um, you would do that with the, you don't have to use the curve and specifically pick where you can add it in the variance now. Um, so if I added variance in here and put this on a Gaussian bell curve, it's gonna push my um, numbers so that they're in a cluster, if that makes sense. So the more cohesive I make that, I would have branches with large sections versus a uh, big, small, big, small, big, small. Hope that makes sense. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and move to the other one, even though I haven't quite tweaked that one to perfection. I guess the only thing I didn't add on here was I didn't add any fold, and I probably would add variance amounts in there as well. You want to make sure when you use a leaf like this where you have the stem cut out. Um, I was very intentional about the way I cut it out um, to, so that I could use fold and croak here. Um, but when you lie these things out, you want um, the vertices to lie on the stem so that you can curl and fold the stem without it folding in half. Um, one of the things there, if I had put tessellation on it, or if I had some extra points in there, you might get a little weirdness, or you might hide the fact that that has a stem at all when it goes flat. So the more you can turn those, the better and fuller it's going to look. All right, what one have we not done? Let's go ahead and go back a bit. We're going to go ahead and do the lemon balm. And did anyone have any plant suggestions or things that they wanted to look at other than that um, Chinese fan palm? I'm definitely gonna um, circle back around to do that. Um, this lemon balm is another one that I got from Quixel Megascans. The rest of the textures in here are all sweet tree. Um, this one has a lot of the same sort of leaf. I reused this one on another plant later. I did three cutouts. Uh, I think I cut out, let's see which one I did. I think I cut out like those guys. Um, this one's using just the leaves themselves for orientation. There's no frond, um, there's nothing fancy on this. Zoom into this guy. 
was all the way up at the end. Um, struggling, struggling to steer. Sometimes that happens. All right. Let's talk about this guy. Instead of setting anything up, um, we just have them aligned. Um, it's a pretty simple setup. Um, we're just gonna delete these guys off of here and go ahead and work on this one. Um, we're just gonna add some batch leaves. We're going to set these to file a taxi and we're gonna put them on, um, these actually come out um, in a balanced way. So I'm leaving them on an uh, opposite, but I'm gonna put them on decussate. And we're gonna go ahead and assign our material, which was the Lemon Balm Atlas. And there we go. We want these to be sky facing, so it's real fast. Just pop them up towards the ceiling, give them a little curl, give them a little fold, put some variants in the fold, and then we're gonna flood this guy. We're gonna make the inner nodal length really tiny. We're gonna make them smaller towards the top. We're gonna grab the end and make them super, super tiny up there, just a little bit tinier. Add some variants in there. Maybe make them really big at the bottom, make it like that. Um, we're gonna go back to our generation style and add positioning and rotate them around. If you look at these guys, they're very, very mathematical. And these are that picture I showed you. Just kind of look at this guy. Do, 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 do. There it is, I lost my picture. Um, I'm ready to keep these guys very, very balanced. And that little teeny tiny guy sits at the top, um, which you can totally do, grab it and make it a little tinier. Um, for this one, I had added a knot at the top. For this one, I can just extend the parent and have one come off the top there and then make them even tinier at the top. Um, because I'm in such a tiny um, plant there, I might have to add a couple dots in there in order to get the leaf at the top to trigger. I do exactly kind of what we did for the weed plant, to be completely honest, but um, we're going to push these out as well, change up the internodal length again, and make them real tight up there together at the top. And it looks like... I wasn't getting as many of the other ones there. I was just making sure. So I got a little bit too much of um, the same replica going on in the leaf. Uh, what we're going to do with the lemon balm to shake that up is instead of doing the fold and curl, we're just going to add some vertex noise to it. I'm going to add a lot of noise and a very, very teeny number in the vertex amount to get some wrinkling in there. And we're going to go back to our twist and maybe add just a little bit of that at the bottom. Um, orientation wise, I kind of want to bring these, uh, maybe up towards the top of the tree. So I'm going to go use that up and push them up, but down at the bottom. So on the bottom part of the tree, I'm just going to fold them back out like that. I can do really extreme things with these curves if you need to go beyond the spot there. I might even make them curl up like that. Um, I really just need a, a couple more leaves to fill this in. It's just not as close together as they should be. Can I maybe change them up a little bit? Um, one of the things that would be kind of fun for this is um, they're mathematical at the top, but I still wanna have some fill down here. Um, so using the spiral on this might be a good choice. Um, what I'm gonna do is spiral the bottom. Um, I'm gonna keep the bottom spiraled and then less towards the top. I actually should have done that curve, not the tree curve. Maybe back that back up. There we go. And that way it'll have like a little bit of turn there at the bottom. Um, since my stem on these is a little bit threadbare because it's a cutout, 
uh, might actually trim a little closer or go ahead and try to twist in there a little better. And I've got a question here. Another software to make the strobulus. I don't know what a strobulus is. <laughs> um, you uh sorry are you saying like the smaller parts or the the hoppy part of the weed or like any kind of anther you can actually use speed tree to make those parts as well you don't need to go to a third party program you just need to be a little creative with it um we have what we call cluster files that we add with the trees um i was actually going to show you a little bit of how we might do that um in the flower tutorial but um, you can make textures from speed tree. Uh, we've shown that in some of the other streams. If you want to go back, uh, to one of our game streams the other week, we definitely make clusters. And basically all that is, is you change the viewpoint to X, Y plane and you craft your, um, thing inside of speed tree. You can use the bend tool, um, to bend things where you want it. And then you place your textures out. And then you can go to file and export material and make something out that looks like the, the bud itself. Um, so I didn't spend a lot of time with it. I just curled it um, up for the sake of the video, but that's how you do that. I'm gonna go back to our regular viewpoint. I'm gonna talk about this flower for a second. This is an option for I guess I should have showed you this one first. We're gonna go to this one, sorry. Changed my mind, you'll have to bear with me. It's because I wanted to show you some of the pitfalls of, of what we're doing here. Um, all right, it's very easy to do these little clustered flowers. You often have, it's in nature, you have like a six flowered, six leafed cluster of leaves that come out. I did this with the leaves only. You can definitely do this with the fronds um, like we did up here. Um, but for this, I'm going to show you a little bit of how to align, um, that guy. And we are going past four today and that's fine. We're just going to keep going until we worked our way through it. Um, all right. This guy is, um, it's actually a hickory leaf and, uh, I made like a chestnut like uh, arrangement before realizing that I had the wrong leaf in mind but um this is a great flower setup and a great uh leaf setup and I've got them on a single stem that is alternating and then I've got these guys on here as phyllotaxy world we're just gonna go ahead and disconnect this for a second wow my computer is catching up. Okay. We're going to, oh wait, jumped over there. That's fine. We don't need it anymore. We'll just set it. Okay. So if you want to do a section of a leaf, it has a set like that. You're going to go ahead and add your batch leaf. Um, I got that on phyllotaxy and I put it on a world, world, world. There are five of them. We're gonna go ahead and put our material on. I was using the hickory chestnut leaf, whatever you call it. And they're all facing the wrong direction. So we wanna go to orientation. And I want them to align with the tip. Like basically on these guys, I want them all to face out from where I've got the tip of the branch. So we're gonna use these parent sensitivity first. And, um, we want to go local and see if that gives us the right thing. Sometimes I have to wiggle because I can't remember what's going on. All right, you'll notice that it's trying to align the tip of my branch, but that messed up the symmetry of my circle. So we're gonna use some um, variants to get them to fan back out. 
I'm just going to use a little bit of variance in the line. I'm going to add little bits in there. I'm going to add a um, variance in the sky influence and probably we need to turn these down a little bit. And let's go ahead and fold these guys up so they got a little bit more shape. If you need them to hold um, the exact shape, I would suggest, let me just back out, back out what I've done real fast. I'll just do several things at once. There we go. Um, I forgot what I was doing there. There we go. All right, <laughs> there we go. I was using the um, sky influence instead to see if I could get a better positioning where it was flipping these guys. I'm still not really getting what I want there. Sometimes this is just a little bit about wiggling things and seeing if you got it where you want it. Um, all of these are to the right right now, so I could use this right to plump them out that way. Um, and once again, I might have to use just a little bit of variance in here to get them to fan out. Um, you could do a shorter stem on these guys if you want to hold a section. Um, you could add that in there um, and have them all pointing up a certain direction. So if you wanted them to always point up, you could do a tiny little branch here. I'm just going to use a single one and use the gravity to push them up and you can just copy your flower and put it back on there. Not rename, paste. <laughs> um, I dropped that way down there. Just connecting it there and then that way they would always be pointed up. Um, that's funky looking. Um, I wanted to give you an alternate way to do this where you can control the head of the flower a little easier. Um, so we're going to do this with anchors. Um, it's actually a, it's more of a game feature. Um, but it's perfect for this. So what we've got here is, I'm going to zoom in to find my tree, might be here. There we go. I'm going to just add another stem in here so you can see what's going on. I'll just copy it. There we go. All right, let's do the same um, flower guy there. Hide that guy. Where are you? I just have so much in the scene. <laughs> there we go. All right, this one is made, um, but I have all the petals are actually attached to the leaf texture itself. So what I did was on the lemon balm, I copied this atlas again and I called it the flower tip and I did a single cutout. And I just use these ones that are put together. You could make something like this in Speed Tree and send it back out if you wanted to make one that has four leaves on it. Um, I wanted to make sure that these could fold in half and fold down the middle and so I can uh, get some shape out of them. I saved it there. You're going to use the anchor. And I put, um, you're just going to add these to the leaf and then wherever your leaf, wherever you have an anchor, you're going to have a petal coming out. Um, you'll notice in Speed Tree, if you automatically add these in here, it will kind of create a fan pattern for you. So you don't have to turn these, but these little levers are the direction your leaf is facing. Um, so these are pretty important for this. It makes it super convenient. I don't need all of these, so I'm going to not save it out. Um, but you would want to save that into your slots to, to get going. Um, let's go ahead and add a branch. And then we're going to add a leaf mesh, which is a batch leaf for that. 
And then we're gonna add that material we just made, which was the lemon balm, not the lemon balm, it was the flower tips. I've already forgotten. We're gonna do the orientation and do sky influence. And we're gonna fold that down. Sorry, wrong direction, fold it down and maybe curl it a little bit and get it some shape in there. And then this is going to hold our flower. To get it to the tip of the branch, I'm gonna to go to generator and push it to first. And now we're gonna add petals coming off of all of the anchors. So I'm just gonna add two, that guy there. We're gonna add leaf mesh. And we wanna select our material so it shows up. We're going to add um, a petal that I brought in earlier. I'm checking to see um, why they weren't showing up. I don't know off the top of my head. But we'll figure it out. Um, you can also change um, your anchor. Make sure nobody's talking to me on uh, chat there. <laughs> They're all filling me in on what a strobe this is. I have no idea. Okay, these should be attaching to the anchor right now and I've got the right material. I've got the puddle attached and I've got the anchor itself is on. So I'm just trying to figure out what's going on there. Let me try a, um, oh, let me try a uh, leaf mesh and see if that's what the deal is. Oh, I didn't realize the batch sleeps can anchor. That makes a lot of sense. I totally should have known that. All right, so we've got a petal coming off each of our anchor points. It's got all anchors on here. If you needed to assign a number to them, you could add it that way. Um, we're gonna go to material and hit our petal. And we want the petal to be facing up. We want the face normal to go up as well. So we're gonna go to orientation and use sky influence once more. And we actually might want him to point out, if you're going to do a petal that's closed, um, you could have your petals up like this. You might want your face normal to be the, the other directions. So you might not want to use sky influence. You might want to use um, to turn it out like that. You can curl these guys um, to give them some shape. Just use fold and curl here. And the other one that I did, I just did a second set. So instead of taking my time to add even more puddles, use those controls to push them a little bit higher up and then give them a different shape, like fold it a different direction or curl it a little different direction. Depends on what your flower looks like. Um, now, because I have them all sitting on this texture, I can actually use these to control the entire flower. So now when I go in and I make edits for what, what way this is turning, um, the flower is going to move with it. So it's a little easier to control and you don't have to worry about a lot of specific uh, orientation problems. I think the, that I'm just going to show you what we did on the other ones that I didn't get to and just for clarity and then that kind of wrap up our stream for the day. Um, it's kind of a non-traditional stream rather than just building something all the way through, but I hope it's helpful. And if it's not, then y'all can boo and we won't do another one like this. <laughs> so, um, the only thing I didn't show you are these two. And basically I just wanted to show you the spiral on this I, that I have set. I've got three sets of them. I show you my generator for a second here. Um, so this is the main one and I have a leaf setting on it. I'm going to hide these for a second to show you. Um, I actually took the tube that it's sitting on and I left it there and I made this little plant looking thing 
I wanted it to have a stem that it was sitting on a lot. We get this question a lot. Um, you can make this by grabbing the skin tab and zeroing out the tip. So that branch is still there. Um, I'm just grabbing this and hitting a zero in here and a zero in the tip and I might push it farther that way and then that way I'm not wasting any polygons in the tip but I have this little thing holding my um, stem there. I have these on interval and I have it on um, spiral and this is just a natural thing that happens in nature sometimes. Um, this isn't a particular plant I'm making, I just thought it looked jungly and cool. Uh, I spiraled those guys, and once I got everything into place, I wanted to add, um, kind of, I guess I was thinking of, like, a, a bird of paradise, I think is what I was thinking of, where they have the little parts coming off, like, you might have a, pet a petala coming off there, and so I just copy-pasted, um, and then I did something different with the tip, so on the frond, I changed the shape, um, and I added instead of gravity, I added it the other direction. Um, I did that a third time to give it some depth, and now I've got this interesting looking double helix thing going on. On the last one, I just wanted to show you the conifer. I have a material itself has multiple pieces on it, and you might end up doing this with a lot of materials to save texture space. Um, I have these guys set up on, zoom out for a second there. I have them on batch leads and I have them coming off of alternating file taxi for these guys and they are aligned and I wanted these leaves, leaves to be f relatively flat aligned with the branch. And so I have these guys set up on alternating as well and then I went into the orientation and I add some variants in there and I have them pointing up on the tip of the branch here I wanted a very specific texture so I added a, a whole new generator and that's just this ending piece here I had very specific pieces that I needed to put together section one section two and I wanted the the end piece to always be this one so I have this guy set to gen any to extend the parent on that one. So I think that I'm going to see if we have any closing questions or anything that you guys want to throw at me. Just like, how do I make this real fast and let the stream catch up and all that. Um, but I think I haven't seen Okay, to, a to answer um, LC sketch Please make a video about grass. We definitely have a grass one coming up. I think that one's scheduled for January. Um, we just did a bush one last week. So if you want to check out the bush. And we're going to be doing all different types. Uh, we'll do one on a palm. And um, this next week is going to be a holly tree. And so we're going to do waxy leaves. And kind of focus on the PBR. But also do like a conifer shape for that one. And um, I think I'm caught up. I've got one last question about leaves colliding into the ground and leaves pouring onto the ground. And I want to show you a really quick trip that we do with those guys. Um, I'm gonna let Danny answer the video card question. And um, let's just talk a second about forces, um, just for placement and shape, and just so you know that they're in there. I've got a couple forces on the scene already to add shape to the branches and such. Um, but if you wanted, I'm just gonna leave them there. I'm gonna just do that. I'm gonna use it on the red bud here. I'm going to focus in on that guy just to use an example of what you're talking about with the ground. 
I'm kind of heading back over here. All right, let's say this guy is on the ground uh, or leaning towards the ground. I'm just going to go into generator mode and knock it sideways a little bit and it's bending already. So it's kind of going down there. Uh, one of the things I did was I moved it. And so we're gonna need to turn the ground on so we can see where it is. And we're gonna want to show the grid on the bottom so I know it's way down there, yeah. And I'm gonna move it back. Bloop. There we go. I don't know why that needed sound effects, but just bear with me there. Um, we're gonna go in generator mode and uh, bend it into the ground so you can see what's going on there. Uh, one of the things you could do is have the branch itself align with the ground. So you can add a uh, mesh in here for it to crawl over and then have your branches kind of, your leaves and your tree uh, hover over it so they don't do it. Um, if you don't want your branches to hit the ground, you would go spine and hit prune on the ground and that's going to knock out that whole branch because it's hitting it on the tree. That will be really helpful. If you need it to spill and grow around, you can do, um, just go ahead and add a new mesh. We want to add it that way. Sorry about that. Add it. This is going to be our ground plane. I'm going to rename it. We're going to cut it out. Um, so hit edit. I uh, don't need a lot of polygons for this. So I'm just going to do like that and add tessellation. Why not? Um, you don't have to include this in the scene afterwards. We're going to add that to the, as a mesh force. Sorry, I drag and dropped and right clicked it. You can add this as a mesh as well. It'll work the same way. Um, I'm using the screen space keys, W, E, and R, um, to move these guys around. Um, so W is going to be, um, I'm using the R key for this and just grabbing all three of them at once. I'm just going to slide and this is going to be our new ground. And Hell Nash is asking about bamboo. Um, bamboo is a really fun one. I might do a specific stream on that. It's one of my favorite plants I've made just because um, it involves using the displacement. And so I might do a stream on that that includes how to get a shape for stuff like that. That's just non-traditional. We're going to go um, click on our branch itself and you select it to listen to the force that we added. So you're going to hit the forces tab. And we're going to hit the ground and I have it set, I'm hitting the force itself, um, I have it set to attract and obstruct. If you don't want it to affect the shape, um, you can just put this on none. And if you want it to prune it, you can have it prune it. I'm just going to leave it on obstruct so it can grow along the ground. I'm also going to select the leaves and go to forces and also tell them to listen to the ground. And I need to lower it off a little bit there. I'm going to actually turn it on sooner and then turn it off on the tip. I feel like something might be a little too ground. The gravity might be a little too aggressive. Get the puddle. Now, um, once it hits the ground and you need it to snake a little bit. We're going to like increase the look ahead. That's what's going to relax it. So right now it's like turbo hitting the ground. Um, look ahead is going to look at that mesh and try to see it for you. So we're going to increase the look ahead. To kind of relax that out and then we're going to add some noise now there's two different types of noise i'm in v9 also so this will be slightly different if you do it in v8 um still totally applicable but um just to give you a heads up we're going to add the noise in the force amount just a little bit in there and see if we can't get some 
A little bit of movement going on in there. I might have to add gnarl on this one. Actually, I'm going to go to the spine and use what I showed you earlier. We're just going to use the parent curl and roll it to the right. There we go. Yeah, we want to lift these leaves up now. And so I'm going to go ahead to orientation and um, where they are folding in on the bottom there on the top, I'm just going to take the end of the branch and lift them back up. Um, but that's how they did it. They curled. You're going to have to do a little bit of tweaking in there to get them completely above. You might have this taper off a little bit, honestly, to not uh, listen to strongly. It seems like something is interacting in there and I'll have to figure out what that is later. You can kind of move this down, back up to get it into place. Um, but I hope that answers your question. And... We are um, getting asked to make a Christmas tree. We're going to make a conifer pretty soon. And next week is a holly that's conical and then the same shape of a Christmas tree. Themed things. Um, yeah, stay tuned because we have some goodies for Christmas that will be available. And um, that wraps up my stream for the day. Um, I will see you guys next week and I do our holly and I'm going to leave um, chat rolling for just a second. If you have any more final questions, I'll try to type and answer them or if there's something you want to see for later, just we'll jot it down. So thank you guys and thanks you for joining in and uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs>